So in this episode, I'm gonna show you how to set up one of these. I'm gonna teach you how to avoid common mistakes that people make when they try and connect devices like this to their computer. This is the Blackmagic Design Ultra Studio 4K Mini. This works fantastically with DaVinci Resolve. And I've done a complete episode where I show you the advantages of using an IO box or a card with DaVinci Resolve to get you the best quality possible. And I'll put a link to that in the description below. That video also covers some of the other options available. This is just one of a few devices that work with DaVinci Resolve. And depending on the size of box or card you get, you get different connections. So if you look on the back here, I've got various connections going on. Uh, so I'm gonna show you in this video how to set this up. So if you do decide to use an IO device, you don't have to with DaVinci Resolve, you can just use it software only. But if you do use an IO device, it has to be from Blackmagic Design. You can't use a product from say, Aja or Matrox. It's gotta be a Blackmagic Design product. However, these work not only with DaVinci Resolve, but they work with Avid, Final Cut Pro, uh, Premiere, After Effects, tons and tons of different software. So it's not just restricted to DaVinci Resolve. So to connect these to your computer, you've got two options. You've either got a PCI Express card that sits inside your computer, and then all the video connections and audio connections are actually on the card itself. So if you're using a box, which is the Ultra Studio range, then they connect by Thunderbolt 3. Now you can't use a USB-C cable, it has to be Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 2 with an adapter, but that is what you need. Now, as I've got one here, this is a Thunderbolt 3 cable. I'm just gonna connect that in. That goes that end, and that end goes to your computer, and that's it, the box is connected. Obviously you need to power it up. So that's how to connect it to the computer. Then what you need to do is connect your video and audio. So I've got here a HDMI cable. So this would be, if I want to monitor on a HDMI monitor, I would plug my HDMI out here, and this end would go to the monitor, and that's it. That's gonna allow me to view true video signal via HDMI on my external monitor. Now use good quality cables, this is gold plated, so try and use good quality cables where you can, and make sure that they're capable of delivering 4K if you wanna work in 4K. Now the gradient monitor I've got here runs on SDI, it's a serial digital interface. So I've got an SDI cable here, that would go to the SDI output, and then the other end would just connect to my monitor, and then I've got HDMI and SDI out. So you can have multiple connections connected at all times, and you literally just switch in the software which one you want to use. Now, one thing to be aware with Thunderbolt 3 is it's restricted to two meters. They only come in lengths of up to two meters. So if you wanna go longer than that, you're gonna to need to look at fiber optic options. Now, there's a company called Corning who make fiber optic Thunderbolt 3 cables, and they run in lengths, like crazy lengths. I don't know what they go up to, like 50 meters or something. So in the studio here, I'm running a five meter fiber optic Thunderbolt 3 cable from my Mac, which is down below me here, to my Ultra Studio 4K Extreme, which is at the back here. You can just see that in the back. If you're on a PCI Express card, you're just gonna run those cables that I've just connected to the box, but directly into the card. Now these I.O. devices, whether it's a card or a breakout box, need a driver. And it's the same driver, whether you've got a card or a box, whichever box you've got, it's the same driver running all of them. And the reason you need a dedicated driver is because these work with other products. They don't just work with DaVinci Resolve. So it's not enough to just install DaVinci Resolve on your computer and expect the box to work. You need to download the driver. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. The product's called Desktop Video. It's a Blackmagic Design product. So let's have a look. And I'm gonna go to blackmagicdesign.com. And if you go to support, and then click on capture and playback. Down here, you'll see desktop video, and the latest one today is 12.2.3. That's for the Mac, and if you're running on Windows, you've got 12.2.2. This one is a Mac dedicated update. So download the Windows version here, and you're good to go. It's free to download, and you just literally run that. So on a Mac, that will then appear here in your system preferences. And on a Windows machine, you'll see it listed under Blackmagic Design, desktop video. So once you've installed the driver, as long as you've got a Thunderbolt 3 connection to a box and power, of course, or you've got your PCI Express card installed, then once you load the Blackmagic Design desktop video software, it recognizes the box that's attached. Also, if you go down here, you might have a list of several boxes and devices. You might have more than one attached. So basically to configure, choose the one that you want. And then on here, video output. So for example, I've got my video playback set to display a black output when it's not playing, so I don't get burning on my screen. And then if I come down here, you see uh, the SDI output settings are set here. So I've got a single link SDI connector. So I need to check that. Some of the older style ones have dual link, but I'm only a single link SDI connection on here. So these are just defaults. You can change this in the individual softwares that you're working in. So if I wanna change resolution, for example, I can do that inside DaVinci Resolve. I can do that inside Premiere. I don't have to keep coming to this. On the input side, I don't really do much inputting, but if you're capturing from a device, then you wanna set that up here, depending on which one you want switched. 
Audio wise, again, audio input, I've got mine XLR. And down here you can change headphone levels, for example, audio output levels. You can change all those settings here. If you want to do up or down conversion, some of the boxes and cards let you do that. You can switch in here. So you want to do SD to HD conversion. Serial port is connecting to a VTR. I haven't done that for many years now. And about will give you the software version. Now I'm on a slightly older driver. And the reason for that is I've not upgraded my Mac OS to Monterey yet for several reasons. So I'm on 12.1, which is the last version that works on Catalina. And that's it on the desktop video side. But just be aware you need to install that software. That is the driver for your box. So the only other thing to check now is your user settings and your project settings inside DaVinci Resolve. So if I press Command and Comma, that will bring up my user preferences. And in the software, you can do that up here and go to preferences. So what you need to do is look at your system settings and your video and audio I.O. And you'll see there that my monitoring device, my, this is the output of that box, is the Ultra Studio 4K Extreme 3. And again, you can choose if you've got multiple devices in there, you can choose from here. The capture device is set to none because I'm not capturing anything, so, but I could set that to the Ultra Studio. You've got audio monitoring delay here. So if you've got a slight delay in your audio and video, you can adjust that just here. And the audio I.O. again is coming from desktop video. That's the I.O. engine, that's the software. I want the desktop video to control my audio. So let's have a look at the DaVinci Resolve project settings, see what we need to change in there. So up here, we've got our timeline resolution. This is in the master settings. So timeline resolution is the resolution of my timeline. It's the resolution that I'm working at. But because I've got an I.O. box, I can actually monitor in a different resolution. And I want to monitor in HD. This monitor I've got here is not capable of doing Ultra HD. So I'm going to monitor that at 1080p 25. I've got a single link configuration. I'm monitoring that at 10 bit, full video bit depth. What I need to do now is go to my image scaling. If I click on image scaling, currently it's set to match timeline settings, but I'm going to override that. I'm going to say, don't match the timeline settings. I want to monitor in HD. And if I press save on that now, my monitor is now monitoring in HD, but my timeline is playing in ultra HD. Now, one tip is you can actually set your timeline settings to regular HD while you're working. And if you want to output in ultra HD, you can just switch that at the end and then everything rescales. Any windows and shapes you've done get mapped pixel perfect. But basically I can monitor perfectly in HD all the time. My timeline is running in 4K. Obviously, I might want my timeline in 4K if I'm doing things like a detailed noise reduction or particular fine tuning where I want the timeline processed in Ultra HD. Now, if you're working in HDR, there's a couple of other settings that you need to look at. First of all, you need to make sure if you're using HDMI that you're working in 2.0 or above and that your cable is compatible with that. And you can check that if you go to the Blackmagic Design website, go to the product page, Click on the tech spec, uh, choose the product that you're working with. So in our case, the Ultra Studio 4K Extreme 3. Click on the tech specs and down here, a HDMI configuration, you'll see that it supports deep color and HDR. All right, so it needs to save that to give the correct metadata and signals down that HDMI cable to work in true HDR. So some of the older products are not actually compatible to that level. And then you also need to check this checkbox. If I go to my master settings and down here, you need to say enable HDR metadata over HDMI. So take a look at this video here if you want to see the advantages of using an I.O. box over just using the software itself. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode.